So 2015 has been such an exciting year here at the centre and I wanted to share with you some of the learnings we've taken away from it as well as some of our ideas moving forward because they're so exceptionally important to all of us. As you know, we've been thinking very hard um, alongside colleagues from around the world about what it means for a nation to have capacity to be cyber secure and we see that currently through our five lenses, whether that's your ability to set effective policy and strategy as a nation and to engage in international dialogue as a nation, all the way through to your ability to set rule of law, um, underpin that by regulation, use that to incentivise cyber secure behaviours in the environment, in, in the wider socio-economic environment, whether that means ensuring you have access to the right technology, to defend your critical systems, the right business models, to drive creativity in those technologies. Because as we know, we face ever increasing creativity from malign entities online. Or whether that really means understanding how you move your society to have a stronger cybersecurity mindset so that everybody can play a productive role in ensuring that a nation is cyber secure. And finally, of course, understanding what kind of knowledge we all need, depending upon our roles and how we ensure that we have the ability to deliver that knowledge um, in the right time frame, at the right speed, so that people can really play their part in understanding cyber risk and making sure that we manage it effectively. And we do so much as we work around the world in really deepening our understanding of what, what these things mean. But primarily we've been working on this cybersecurity maturity model. And the purpose of the model, of course, is so that nations can self-assess themselves, understand where they are in respects of key indicators in each of these dimensions, and then understand how to make progress. Whether you want to invest more strategically in certain parts of these dimensions, or whether you don't need to in certain parts. And we started the year working in partnership with the Organization of American States and the World Bank um, so that we could go out and support their work, particularly in the developing world, with nations who understood that they really needed to develop their cybersecurity capacity and they wanted to take a more strategic view. And they were using this model to help understand their needs and to prioritize. And that's been such an exciting experience for all of us here at the center. And the partnership with the World Bank and the Organization of American States is so important to what we do um, because we need to work with capacity building organizations. We need to work with the nations who are the recipients of this capacity building knowledge to ensure that the, the great research and intellect that in a way we are custodians of here in Oxford because so many people are based all across the world in industry, government, as well as academia, so that we can ensure it has impact. And so we've learnt some useful lessons um, that I'm just going to give you a brief flavour of uh, right now. And of course, there's many other ways of finding out more. And one of them was this. In particular, in the developing countries, what we found was, as we brought together stakeholders in that country to discuss what was currently practiced in terms of cybersecurity in this breadth of dimensionality, what participants were telling us was that by hanging around and having the opportunity to hear the questions that were being asked by their colleagues and their peers, and sometimes outside of the session, the specialization that they had come to attend, it really gave them an educational experience that was deep and worthwhile. It helped them understand the breadth of the challenge. It helped them understand how the part of the cybersecurity world that they were currently practicing and engaged with interacted across this broad, broad range of issues. And that's incredibly important because ultimately, as we move forward to be effective, we do have to orchestrate across this breadth and we need to do so strategically. And that brings me on to another point. It became apparent to us and the colleagues we were working with that actually it's incredibly important for a nation to take a strategic view 
to develop its own strategy on cybersecurity, even if you're at the very outset startup phase of considering yourselves as a nation and, and how you make those investments, it must be done in the context of a strategy because it really helps you begin to ask those essential questions about the breadth and what you do first. And the other lesson that we learned that we took away was the importance of really being able to link this model that we were working on um, to the notion of harm that we're trying to reduce. Because, of course, we don't want to put huge amounts of investment into cybersecurity, whether we're a nation or a company or just a citizen of cyberspace. We all have limited resources. So we need to guide that investment towards the harms that really, really concern us. And we have to do so recognising that that realisation of harm, as well as the perception of harm, can change fairly rapidly. And so we've begun now investing in understanding what it means to witness and experience harm through a lack of cybersecurity as a nation here in the centre. And we've begun collecting evidence and consulting widely about what the meaning of, of cyber harm is, um, whether that's harm at an individual level, harm to your economies, harm to your national security. And we really, really firmly believe that it's in understanding and unpacking this notion of cyber harm and linking that to cybersecurity capacity that we can make the strongest and most strategic and well-informed cases for investment moving forward. So they've been particularly exciting times and our work uh, with international organisations um, going in and helping them to deploy this thinking to the benefit of, benefit of countries continues. And most recently, we've joined forces with the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organisation and we're working with them, um, as well as continuing to work with the World Bank and the Organisation of American States. So that's very exciting. Um, with a different lens on, though, we've also been considering and reflecting on what the global community should be doing in terms of prioritisation. So this is not looking at this through just a national lens, but an international lens. And what we've seen is an awful lot of investment emanating from, from countries, international organisations and commerce towards building cybersecurity capacity of one form or another. And there's a lot of activity around the world. And our belief now is that we really, we really ought to be aiming higher and more strategic with this effort. And what we mean by that is, it's not just coordination that we need. It's not just telling each other what we're up to. In actual fact, it's combining our efforts, optimising the combined pool of resource so that the sum really is greater. So that when we put all these parts together, what we result in is something that's trans transformative for the world. And in some corners, um, when we're working on this thinking, we call this reaching for longer termism in our strategy. Whilst we fully understand the need to react to immediate, immediate concerns, to immediately be building essential capabilities, our view is actually that we have so much resource, intellectual resource, manpower resource, time of very clever human beings going into this problem of how we de develop our cybersecurity capacity that we really could be much more strategic in how we act together. And that, of course, from an international community's perspective means we need to take a view on what we do as countries and what we do as an international community. And the piece that would be most effectively performed in collaboration, that should be done strategically and that takes much more than simply coordination. So we're working towards that goal too as we move forward. And I guess probably the last, the last key learning um, from this year, and we look forward to many more, is this, that of course we have our own capacity challenge. There's only so many countries we can 
put people in in a year. And so what we're looking to do now as a centre is to develop strategic partnerships with expert organisations around the world in all of the different regions of the world so that in a way we can help them build the capacity to deliver this kind of learning and, and to champion and be custodians of, of collecting the knowledge and the experience so that we as a community can do so much more. And so we'll be investing very heavily in developing that more global reach for the centre in the coming year. And we very much look forward to working with all of you on it.